All right, welcome back, everybody. We are jumping back into bracket notation to find the last character in a string. We've been away uh, from our progress for a couple of days. Uh, I had a, a conference locally that was awesome and that occupied us for a few days, but um, and uh, just kind of recouping. I had sick family. Um, still have sick family, but uh, just personal stuff got in the way. But um, anyhow, we are back today with bracket notation to find the last character in a string. And uh, E.B. and Mesfin are here with me. And uh, maybe Jamal will join us again. He had to step away. But um, anyhow, without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. All right. In order to get the last letter of a string, you can subtract one from the string's length. For example, if var first name equals Charles string, you can get the value of the last letter of the string by using first name bracket first name dot length minus one close bracket. Use bracket notation to find the last character in the last name variable. Hint, try looking at the last letter of first name variable declaration if you get stuck. All right, so we're working with the last name and we want to say last name or no yeah I'm gonna say last name and then last name length minus one and actually let's console log this so that it shows up somewhere All right, yeah I could can I just assign this a very oh yeah I need to assign it here yeah, just a var. Oh, I'm, I might just do this. Yeah. I might just do this. Okay. And then I'll just console log this. How about that? Is that a little better? Yeah, that's quite good. Yeah. Boom. So we're pulling this E. And it's popping up in the console. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Everyone understand what we're doing here? Mm -hmm. We're going to the the length, which I suppose that would be what's that? Four plus four, so that'd be eight. So it would be the seventh, because we're starting at zero. That would be the seventh character. And but if you just console only last name dot length, it just only tells us the number of characters, right? Yeah. Or would hmm. last name dot length. Can you console that? Yeah, that's the let's console like that. Um, a moment. Sorry, yes. I had an alarm go off. Would the length be eight? Last name dot length. Yeah, it would be eight. So that's why to get the seventh character because of the zeroth index yeah. number la, la, character. The, the bracket notation is the one makes we, we get uh, yeah. character. Hmm. Interesting. Without, yeah, without, yeah. The, without the bracket, we get only the, the, the number of the characters. Yeah. Hmm. And so then, 
minus one is seven. Yeah, I understand. Okay, all right, I'm just gonna swipe this little code snippet and pop that bad boy in here. And and let's keep moving on to the next one. Right, I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna commit this as use bracket notation. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Wrong thing. I am a smart guy. <laughs> I almost... <laughs> Yeah, um, you on the wrong. Yeah, I was almost committing that to the React one, but thank God it didn't accept it. It said no changes because I hadn't been working in that one, so I almost did a no no. All right, so uh, let's run the test. Okay, yeah, let's uh, just get rid of that. Run the test. All right. Use bracket notation to find the nth to last character in a string. You can use the same principle to just use the, we just used to retrieve the last character in a string to retrieve the nth to last character. For example, you can get the value of the third to last letter of the var first name equals Charles string by first name by using first name bracket first name dot length minus three close bracket use bracket notation to find the second to last character in the last last name string I guess a second to last okay so again, we're working in this. We have bracket notation. And we say last name dot length minus two. And now let's console log this. And they say hint, try looking at the third to last uh, first name variable declaration if you get stuck. Thanks for code camp. So kind. Okay, so it's C, which is right because that's the second to last character. And again, I'll pull the code snippet. I think I can just pull this. No. Uh, I think I'll just go ahead and pull everything again. Um, um. And, um. Okay. All right, save. And let's run the test. Well, all right. From what I remember, this one I think is a, uh, a doozy, but let's see. All right, word blanks. So everybody up with me on this point? Sorry. Everybody with me to this point? Yeah, yeah, I'm there. Okay. EB, you with us? 
Oh yeah. I mean, All the length that that made sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Variable dot length. Yeah. Okay. All right. And let me know if Jamal jumps back in. Um, yeah. All right. We will now use our knowledge of strings to build a Mad Lib style word game we're calling word blanks. You will create an option, option, optionally humorous fill in the blank style sentence. In a Mad Libs game, you are provided sentences with some missing words like nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. You then fill in the missing pieces with words of your choice in a way that the completed sentence makes sense. Consider this sentence. It was really blank and we blank ourselves blank. This sentence has three missing pieces, an adjective, a verb, and an adverb. And we can add words of our choice to complete it. We can then assign the completed sentence to a variable as follows. Var sentence equals it was as a string, it was really a string, plus this string hot, plus and we string, plus laugh string, plus ourselves string, plus silly string, period. In this challenge, we provide you with a noun, a verb, an adjective, and an adverb. You need to form a complete sentence using words of your choice, along with the words we provide. You will need to use the string concatenation operator. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the plus sign to build a new string. Using the provided variables of my noun, my adjective, my verb, and my adverb. You will then assign the formed string to the result variable. You will also need to account for spaces in your string so that the final sentence has spaces between all the words. The result should be a complete sentence. All right, so. All right. So they've already set us up with a function called word blanks. And they've assigned us uh, that we need a noun. Okay. All right. So just go ahead and start building this out so that our nouns are there. My noun plus a string plus my adjective string plus my verb plus a string right, plus my adverb. And now let's go ahead and fix the words. Oh, actually, I do a period. You need uh, one more plus? Yeah. All right, so what do we want our sentence to say? Um, when blank went to the uh, let's say uh, post office <laughs> 
What were you going to say? You, you need to add one more add concatenate after my adjective. Oh, yeah, you're right. Good catch. I dropped the ball. But I have mess fit in here. Two. When my yeah, I can say yeah, I can say yesterday. Blank went to the blank post office to blank. His postcards blank. Okay. All right. So let's say Medea. And then we need an adjective. What's the first adjective that you think of? something big, big is something always coming to my head but big well we could say janky do you know what janky is oh. <laughs> I don't want to know that oh janky is like uh it's like, uh, Ibi, how, how would you describe janky? When something is janky, that means it's like, it's messed up. They're like crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I won't say that. I won't say beat up. I'll say send. We'll be nice. Okay. All right. So now if we, let's say var uh, thing. Okay. So now let's say console log bar thing yesterday and there's an extra space Medea went to the janky post office to send a few postcards quickly all right our sentence made sense <coughs> ah I see no worries EB <coughs> All right, so I think this should pass. I'm gonna go ahead and swipe this bad boy, plop it down into word blanks. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, we could, I guess, we could have said uh, Evie was dealing with her janky bank. That <laughs> yeah, that'll be a more practical example. Yeah, yeah. Her her bank is being janky because they're not doing what they said they were gonna do. So that's being that is the ultimate being janky. Um, all right. And 
I'm gonna push this here. I'm gonna say word blanks. Boom. 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 All right. Put in the test. We got the check mark far out. <clears throat> All right. Now let's work in this. Next one is store multiple values in one variable using. JavaScript arrays. Hooray. <coughs> With JavaScript array variables, we can store several pieces of data in one place. You start an array declaration with an opening square bracket. End it with a closing square bracket and put a comma between each entry like this. Var sandwich equals open bracket, string peanut butter, comma, space, string jelly, comma, space, string bread, close notation bracket. Modify the new array, my array, so that it contains both a string and a number. So it's gonna contain a string and a number in that order. And to refer to the example code in the text editor if you get stuck. All right, so we got my array and we need a string. So we can say mesfin. And let's say, <clears throat> what's your favorite number, mesfin? Six. Six. All right, so I think that's all they want us to do right here. But I, what I think we can do is, let's see, I'm gonna toy around with this real quick. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call one. No, I need to call my array one, boom. Actually, I don't need that. I need this here. And I'm going to call this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And no. Hmm. In why you put plus six, maybe you need comma. Oh, you're right. I don't know why I put plus. But now. <clears throat> I swear, man, JavaScript is so detailed. All right, so if we call the entire array, this is what it would be. If we wanted to pull the first one, we could say this. Or the, the zeroth, sorry, we had to say zeroth. So zeroth would be Mesfin. And if we console log it, or actually if we, yeah, let's console log it. All right, so let's say type of, it says that it's a string. But if we change this to a one, and we change this to a one, it's gonna say number. So based on, the input in our array, the type is not declared specifically, but indirectly, we you know, store this within quotes. It's understood that it's a string, there's a number, yeah. not inside quotes, 
which we could still make this a quote and it can changes test, it to uh, a string. Yeah. Can you test this my array dot length? What are you gonna give us? Uh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. All right, so let's get rid of the type. And ooh, here's a nice one. We can do the length of the array. Uh, remove this uh, one. What? The <clears throat> uh, it won't give us that. It only give us the length of the array itself. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what about if you put minus one? Uh, my array dot length minus one. What are you gonna have? Minus one. It's gonna be one. Oh, it just okay. It just read um, uh, decreasing the the length of the the array, which is now one. Mm -hmm. it's not like the last element of the array, like string. Yeah. No, I know where you're going with that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Let's see if we can do that. Um, okay. Last um, array item equals my array dot. Would it be length again? Uh, no, maybe like you need this uh, square bracket. Uh, oh, like open like that? Mm, Minus one? No, my array again, open square bracket. Here? Yeah, I remove everything like except my array. Yes. Uh, yeah, now, yeah, my array dot links. <coughs> no, uh, another my array. <clears throat> yes, my array inside the bracket. Oh, here. Yeah, if you write like that. my array dot links minus one. Same thing. I don't know what does this mean, but uh, you didn't consult. This is the last array item. Can you consult the last array item? Okay. Let's see what it does. My computer. Okay, come on. That's a log. Last array item. And. Nothing. Nothing. I wonder why it's not doing anything there. Nothing. No error. No, no nothing. Nothing. Not a thing. Let's see what it does now. Nothing. Again. <laughs> um. Hmm. What? what? Okay, it was taking issue with that. It's saying this is a syntax error. Unexpected token. Mm, yeah, uh, because the, the bracket shouldn't be empty, I think. If you can tell us the length. Hmm. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. 
I didn't declare it as a variable. Let's see what it, <clears throat> let's see what it does now. My var, my array, dot length. <clears throat> Six, all right. It was because I didn't declare it as a variable. What a smart guy. All right. Minus two. Yes, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, no, no. Yeah, now we figured it out. Okay. All right, I'm going to save this. Yikes, I don't want to do that there. All right, let's do this. That was fun. Yeah. So this language uh, method is working both for string and array. The same way. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, I'm glad we uh, toyed around with that. Let's do that. Boom. Boom, boom. Cancel. Let's save. Commit, sync. All right, <clears throat> back to free code camp. And I wonder if this will bounce us back. Nope, did not. All right, <clears throat> nest one array within another array. You can also nest arrays within other arrays like this. Okay, string. And then within that string, there's a second string. There's two items. There's a bull's string and there's 23 string. And if you don't get this reference, do you get this reference, Mesfin? Who yes. is, who well, is bull's 23? Uh, sorry, I didn't get what you mean. Who is bull's 23? And who is White Sox, 45? So you mean that how we access those? No, this is an American culture reference. Uh -huh. That's a hint. He's often called the goat in American uh, sports. Oh, okay which is an acronym for the greatest of all time. Okay. This is actually Michael Jordan's team and his number. Uh -huh. And he also played baseball. He retired at one point to play baseball and he played for not the White Sox, but he played for a minor league team for the White Sox uh, franchise, but his number was 45. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. But that is a side note that is not really relevant <laughs> other than the fact that <clears throat> it's one person. It, Michael Jordan would be the entity, but the information of his basketball career is here in this nested array. And then this information is the array for his baseball career. Yeah. So that's how it's relevant. Okay, so this is called a multi-dimensional array. Create a nested array called my array. All right, so let's do my array. And let's say let's do this. Let's say basic JavaScript.
And then let's say we're on lesson 34. And then simultaneously, we are in the React course. Or we're in the front end library. Certification. And we're on, let's just say, lesson three. Um, you forgot one comma there between the two. Areas. <clears throat> oh, you're right. Mm. Catch. All right. Yep. So not only do we need comma splitting our list here, we have a an array list of these two that must be separated by a comma as well, or it won't work. All right, so let's toy around with this. All right, so Ness, uh, Messen, walk me through how I would, how do I access number 34? Okay, uh, well, console. Um, yeah, of course, you bracket inside the bracket, my array. And uh, the square bracket. Um, you want access 34. So that one is on the, the first array, which is zero. Just only zero. Uh. Okay. Zero oh. inside, yeah. Zero. Uh, I think you need to create another bracket. Second one outside, not in the same bracket, but outside. Uh, no, no, like uh, one to that, next to the other. One square bracket and another one outside. So like we have two, two, two square brackets. Like this. Yeah. So put zero on the first one mm -hmm. and one, one on the second one. Yeah. And you miss one, yeah. Boom. Nice. All right, EB, are you there? I guess sure. she's yeah. so occupied with her bank stuff. Okay. All right. So if I wanted to occupy front end library, I would do console, oh, not confirm, console <clears throat> log my array. And since I'm wanting to access that one, it would be the one and then it would be uh, zero. Boom. All right, I think we got it. So to jump down into a variable, you have to declare it first. This is the overall array of zero. So that would be all of this. And then within that one, there's a zero and a one. And the next bracket, allows us to jump into 34 and, and then it outputs it here. Similarly, this is the one, <coughs> the, the uh, one array. And within the one array, there's a zero at the array, the zero at the index that jumps us to here. It's like layer, like, from the outside layer, then again we come inside, it's like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, we turn the outside, then 
each step takes us further into the nesting of the, yeah, it's like, this is outer layer, then this is inner layer, inner nesting part. Uh, so we just handle it by parts. Out, outer part into inner part of the arrays until there's nothing there's nothing more because within 34 ooh here's another one how would i access the number four only from the 34 oh that's a bit tricky one so i think i would do length minus wait okay length i don't know maybe one Put minus one and let's see what is happening. Okay. I don't think anything happened. Yeah, it's saying not a number. Uh... Because the problem, uh, this is just number. It, it cannot, uh, <laughs> now we are treating each number as like a separate number. If it was a string, then it's like there are characters. Oh, yeah. see, like, but it gave us the length of this. <clears throat> it gave us the length of this this string. Yeah, yeah. yeah so let's see if it gives the length of that one. Yeah. It doesn't. For a number, I guess it doesn't give us the length. Uh, Only strings. Or it should. It's only giving us the length of, of the string. What is this 34? It gave you 34. What is that? No. Uh, 34 30. is this. Right. Yeah. And but 30? The length. 30 is the. Yeah. Is, see, the it's going to it's gonna turn. It's going to change because it's going to be 38 now. Because yeah. I just added a few words. Yeah. So it's the number of characters in this. So you said this is going to change to 31. Yeah. Mm. And this is 29. <coughs> but if I said minus one, yeah, because that's for the string. But anyhow, I think we've taken this too. Chasing down the rabbit hole now. Okay, I'm just gonna save this quickly. And and let's get this. beans all right now oh wait a minute let's commit this one all right boom All right. We can access the data inside arrays using indexes. Array indexes are written in the same bracket notation that strings use, 
except that instead of specifying a character, they were specifying an entry in the array. Like strings, arrays use zero-based indexing. So the first element in the array is element zero. Var array equals 50 comma 60 comma 70 close bracket. So we've already kind of been getting practice with this, but array zero is 50. Var data equals array one, that's going to be 60. <clears throat> so note, there shouldn't be any spaces between the array name and the square brackets. So uh, this shouldn't happen. Although JavaScript is able to process this correctly, this may confuse other programmers reading your code. Creating a variable called my data. Create a variable called uh, my data and set it equal to the first value of my array using bracket notation. Okay, so my data and set it equal to the first value of my array. Okay, so my array and zero is gonna be, and so log this bad boy. I think you forgot var, var my code. Ah, I always do that. I have to get out of that habit of doing that. Oh, let me jump back in. You are right. One of these days, I will stop doing that. And it is 50. Boom. That one was pretty simple. Do you want to practice anything with this one? No, it's okay. All right. <clears throat> Chalk up the win, keep going. All right. Um, um, and let's go. Let's go. Modify array data with indexes. Unlike strings, the entries of arrays are, mu are mutable and can be changed freely. Example, var r array equals 50, comma 40, comma 30, r array to the zeroth index equals 15. So we can see that it was 50, it was declared as 15, and then because it's a variable and not a const, that we could change it. So depending on your needs, that's either a good thing or a bad thing. Note there shouldn't be any spaces between the, vari the array name and the square brackets, like array space bracket zero, close bracket. Although JavaScript is able to process this correctly, this may confuse other programmers reading your code. Modify the data stored at index zero of my array to a value of 45. All right, so my array, yeah, my array at the zeroth index, I want it to equal 45 instead of 18. So now we can console log. 
And let's console log my array. And we can see the change has taken place already. If we console log here, we notice that it's 18 prior to the new declaration, but after it stays the same. Or it um, doesn't stay the same, it's changed. <clears throat> All right. And there was something I was thinking about. Oh, right. And it, it even still works if Let's say we mess around with this some. Okay, so even if the space is there, we can declare this is 65. It still works, but this is not best practices. Variable and brackets. And then we can say best practice. Uses variable and no space between. Uh, when using brackets. Okay. All right. So we've teased that out. Oh, I guess I'm trying to save this like that. Okay. And let's drop that in here. Um, um. Um. All right, and let's save this. Um. Boom. And let's pass this on. Access multi-dimensional arrays with indexes. One way to think of a multi-dimensional array is an array of arrays. When you use brackets to access your array, the first set of brackets refers to the entries in the outermost, the first level array. And each additional pair of brackets refers to the next level of entries inside. Okay. So. So it's accessing, in this first example, it's accessing these three arrays within. This is zeroth, first, second, and third. So this is the third index. <clears throat> then within this index, there is the zeroth index here. That is 10, 11, and 12. And then even further within that index, there is the one-th index. So we've jumped all the way from, like we were talking about earlier, the outer shell, the middle shell, and then the most inner nested array is the third uh, brackets, third set of brackets. And inside that one, 
the one array ends up being 11. So, note there shouldn't be any spaces between the array name and the square brackets, like array space, bracket zero, bracket zero. And even this array, array space to the zeroth space to the zeroth is not allowed. Although JavaScript is able to process this correctly, this may confuse other programmers reading your code. Using bracket notation, select an element from my array such that my data is equal to eight. All right. All right, so we're going to want to jump into the second. So that's going to be. that one and then again we're going to want to show it to the first because this is zero one two and then this is zero one and yeah. now let's, yeah. con let's console log it and it should give us my data it is being eight Boom. All right, so thank you. Very kind of you, Nora. All right. Let's get this name. Um, and right, let's save it. And let's drop that in there. Boom. And then, boom. And then you want to test out another one, or is that you think we got that one? Uh, which one you mean? But this is okay, this is fine. But which one you want me to test? Um, here's maybe one. Within the, <clears throat> okay, so if, if the second level has a, uh, so if the nested arrays have a, a second number, then some may uh, add them together. You want to share your screen and do that? I can, I can do, but I don't know what exactly. <clears throat> so add the two, five, eight and eleven and then I yeah just for those <clears throat> that that's inner nested level add add the eleven eight five and two okay just a moment I'll show you let me go back to the <clears throat> all right
Okay. So, uh, from the second array, is it like we want to add or, or is it kind of concatenation or what is that? Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, I want you to add. But to add <clears throat> each element from the array, then that means we have to go through, like we have to use this for loop. Otherwise, there is no way to uh, access each element and add with with uh, anything. <clears throat> then uh, just add, um, just pick two of them, add them together. Like uh, okay, I'll pick I'll pick one. I say. For example, I pick four or in five and add them. Add the two and add the five. It in the uh, the first nested array, add the two, and then in the second nested array, add the five. Something like this? It should equal seven though, if it's two and five. Okay, which one you want me to add? <coughs> two and five. Okay, that means. Yeah, yeah two and five. Uh, okay, that's. Um, then, then it's not one and zero. Yeah, you're adding. Four and. You're adding four and. Five. five, yeah. Like on the same array, on the second element from this my array, then I'm adding four and five. <clears throat> yeah. But you want me to add two from the first. Yeah, two from the first array oh. plus the okay, five then, from from the second array. Okay, then I can access the two is zero. Two is like zero and one. So something like this, and yes, you got it. And yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, nice. All right, so, good work. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I think this would best be handled by a for loop. Yeah. Or, or even a for while. Yeah, those those loops like you can't go through. Yeah. But anyway, this is also. Yeah, this is okay. that's a little more advanced. Yeah. So. Okay, then you can continue. All right. Let's go to the next one. Okay. 
so if I run this, it's going to be done. And let me make sure I swiped it. Yeah, I did. I'll show you multi-dimensional arrays. OK. All right. <clears throat> so next, we're going to push. Um, OK. Let me resituate here. OK. All right. Manipulate arrays with push. Is that okay if we quit like uh, by after twenty five minutes? Yeah, let's see. Let's see how far we get. Yeah, that, that would be fine. Okay. Do you need to uh, take your son? To, uh, yeah, he just. He, I'm trying to <coughs> make him to play himself, but I have to take care of him. Yeah. I got my two-year-old with me, so we're watching Frozen right now. Yeah. Disney, Disney's Frozen. All right. <clears throat> All right. An easy way to append data to the end of an array is via the push function. Dot push. Open close bracket or open close paren takes one or more parameters and pushes them in onto the end of the array. Var ARR equals bracket one, two, three, close bracket, R dot push, open paren four, close paren, pushes. Okay, so this final item isn't there before, but because you push it, then it becomes included in the array. So push dog string and the number three onto the end of my array variable. All right, so as we can see, there's already two arrays that are nested within this array. So now we want to Push so my array dot push, and then we want to push this dog and three and let's see that it did something. My console logging it. So my array, before it's like this, there's nothing pushed. And then afterward, it is pushed. So we see that it did something. All right. Anything we want to toy around with on this one, Mesfin? Well, it, it just, when you're pushing, it keeps also the order like mm -hmm. dog comes first and number three so because it's always when we are pushing to the array it's always put into the from the back <clears throat> mm -hmm. so the order is also okay so let's way. see yeah. the second and then let's do the first and I'm going to change the number to five and then let's console log it again and because it's a variable I was able to change this number three I was able to change it to five by accessing yeah. it by the notation yeah So it's always coming. Yeah, and I could even do any of them like mm. this. Uh, I could do, I could change John to, like, say, 
His name doesn't have an H. It just has a, or not John. That's not, that's not John. This is John. So say I needed John to be spelled like this. So now John is spelled without an H. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. All right. I think we teased that one out. So we are changing the original one also changed. What's that? The original, like John with H, now is gone. Yeah. Yeah. I changed. Yeah. I changed that. Yeah. By accessing it through the index notation. Yeah. Yeah. So within the first piece of information, and then the zeroth index is John. And I changed that. All right, Jamal, you're back. I think we're just going to be studying for another 15 minutes or so. Is that right, Messin? I always do this, I guess. I'm doing that. Yeah, it's fine. It's okay. All right. Manipulate arrays with push. That's where we're at. Jamal. All right. Let's run this next one. Oh, <laughs> all this stuff is <coughs> on there. <coughs> hey, what's up, Jamal? So we've been working with arrays. And um, this is kind of like an overview. We have information that's in an, an array. It's, uh, and an array is basically... Uh, it's a list. So this is two, two lists within a major list. And uh, so we can think of those in uh, bracket notation like this. One sec. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to handle something. Okay. All right. So, um, one moment. Okay. So, there is a way of accessing the array and changing the information in the array that we were just going over. Uh, so, because in this example, we're pushing, actually. First, I'll go over that. So there's two arrays within this main list. And then there's nested arrays within those arrays, such that there's, again, two, two items within the lists of each of these arrays. All right? And then... With the push function, we can add yet another couplet of uh, an array. We can add that to the end here by pushing. So in our example here, uh, let's see if I can get it to console that. Yeah. So we can see that when we console log array, then it's just the two two arrays. But then when we console log it after we've added the push function, then we see that dog and three have populated. 
say I wanted to change this three, I noticed that it was in error, um, you know, at a later point. And I could do that by accessing, uh, since this is the zero, the, the one, and then the second uh, index, I would access that one first. And then to access the second num the the second uh, entity within the array, I would use the not the zeroth but the for the oneth index to change this three to a five. So that's what's happened here. We output that. It's populating outputting here. Uh, we did the same thing. We said uh, for uh, John. He prefers his name to be spelled without an age. So we corrected that by accessing the zeroth index, which is these two. And then the within the zeroth index, there's another zeroth index. And that's where John is located. We spelled it without the age. And then we output it, and it um, shows up here. So that's, I think that's most of what we covered. Has it? Has there been anything else that we've covered, Mesfin, that you can think of that I should mention? Well, <clears throat> about the arrays is like this, but uh, there was also uh, this length method in the string. Like in oh, general, right, right, right. The, so the length. <clears throat> let's go over that. Okay, so <clears throat> if I wanted to get the length, or, uh, ooh. Let's see. Okay, so let's see if I can do this. Okay, so let's see. Okay. So if I can access this uh, last letter. of cat okay so I'm gonna to try to access the last letter of cat so the last letter of cat is gonna be if I access my array and then I go to the first index I should have that way. Okay, yeah, so then the first index, then then the first. So console log. And then last letter. Yeah, don't forget that var again. In the last. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost comical that I'm doing this stuff. Uh, my computer is slowing down. Okay. Var. <laughs> Elliot. <laughs> okay. All right. So, oh, but when I do that, it's only going to the index. I guess I need to console log it. No, no, you already console down here, but I think you should put these things. Does that does that have to be console log? No, no, already you console the variable here, so you don't need to console that. You don't need that one. So what do you want to access now? The last element of. <coughs> yeah. No, no, no. So you should put dot links minus one. Wait, wait, zero dot length. Okay, all right, so I got it. So access yeah. the cat yeah. dot length. Okay, so dot length is something that introduces us to, um, you know, it's out, as you can see, the output here is three. So three it's C-A-T. Yeah. C-A-T is three. 
and say say we only wanted the final letter of the of the the string. It will give you a number only now. Uh, yeah. Again, you have to put all this into a, uh, this bracket. Yeah. You need to put it inside the bracket again. Uh, can I see the uh, the lid, the cut array? The cut array. Yeah. At the top. Yeah. Yeah. It's up here. Our array, but where is the cut array? Cut no. is in here. Was access it the element of cut? So it's nested within my array. Okay, so <clears throat> you want to access the last letter of the cut array, right? Yeah, we want to. That means we'll you want to grab letter. the yeah. number two. Number two. No, no, no. T. The the, the letter T from the cut. The yeah. last ah. character. <laughs> In that case, you have to go. Us. You have to go first to the to the array itself. Yeah, he's okay now. Put minus one there. Finish this one. Yeah. And uh, I think you have to put the whole this, my array, like one, zero, dot length, minus one. You have to put it into this square bracket. The whole thing. Close there. and I don't know. In square bracket. Here. Uh, you okay. need minus one, yeah, square bracket, close, no, close from here. No, no, no. No, the no. whole thing, like the whole, my array, square bracket one, square bracket zero, dot length, the whole thing. Yeah. Yes, put it in an array, yeah. And another, from the left, from the last left, you say my array, yeah, you have to say my array, yeah, my array of, one again. I think it should be enough now. What's it output? This one. Ca can we see the that's? Let's see. The, yeah. That's the print. It's accessing this. The push to the. No. Uh, uh, oh. 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 oh, oh. Maybe you have modified this somewhere. You have to comment out the dog because you added something to the my array. Let's see. The dog array. Com comment out the dog array. It's accessing the uh, the final. Array. Yeah, the dog array. Yeah. Yeah, just comment out the dog array. Yeah. Yeah, this well, one, the one that you pushed. It, it wasn't accessing. It was only accessing the uh, the final length of array. So it was accessing the uh, it was accessing the third nested array rather than the the one with the cat. Can we go back to the uh, my array, please? One zero means, yeah. 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 So this is one zero. Yeah. It's, it's but supposed it was to be accessing the length because we pushed another one that's dog and five. Yeah, it doesn't matter actually. You still the array is still uh, ordered, right? Right. Yeah. Dog. Yeah. Dogs are relevant. Yeah. Um, you can see the output here. This is the array that's being output. Yeah, can you take this to the the whole this to the to console like to the Chrome console so that we can see? <coughs> yeah, we can. Scary. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, and then inspect and then console. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. Not here. Yeah. This is better. Mm. Oh, wait, wait. So uh, the easiest way is that first let's grab uh, the cut array, the whole cut the array. The whole array and yeah, put it before yeah. this console. Yeah. Let's let's grab the cut array, like from up. Yeah. My array, the whole team and mm, okay. Uh, just uh, do this like this. Uh, <clears throat> uh, grab the this. cut array. Mm. The cut array means the zero one, the the one position. So you can say my array of of uh, my array of one. What have I done? No, it's okay. You're, it's okay. Remove it here by just uh, you know that circle thing. Yeah. Ca can you print my array of one so that we know that we are in the cut array? Uh, the, uh, uh, I'm not allowed to type anymore. In the console console log dot my array, just write my array of one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did I type this in the wrong spot? Ah. Oh. Let me refresh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Refresh. No, I inspect again. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, you can push. Push and paste within here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just you, you can paste it, and then uh, console is good. You just write here my array of two. Just write my array, my array, then two, like bracket of two. So we know that. Two. Is it one, one or two? One, one, one. One. Yes, just one. Let's see. Yeah. Can you see that it's uh, it's uh, the cut, right? And yeah. Yes. And if you say dot length is here, it will give you three. And if you say minus one, it will give you. Yeah. This assigns this to a variable cut length, for example. Just say cut length. Assign. Yeah, assign to cut lingers, bar cut lingers. Not yet, Ranch. Almost, almost. Yeah, so minus one should be. Yeah, so we know that this is uh, the cut lingers. Yeah. And alt internal, yeah. alt internal. Inter Don't uh, no, not inter. Yeah. It's okay. Still, the cut length is the value. It's okay. okay. And now you can say my array of uh, one. No. no, my array into my array. My array of one into cut length. My array of one. Yes, and another array. The cut length is inside. No, just just write cut length. Yes. Yeah. The var. The variable. Yeah, cut links. Yeah. Yeah. Has it been what is it? Saying undefined. Though. Yeah, because the cut link doesn't have value still. Can we check that if cut link has value? I may not be able to go much longer, guys. Okay, okay. My daughter is not, not doing so hot. But um yeah, we can figure out this later. But I'm interested ah man. We're, I feel like we're close. Because we need to access the length. Yeah. I don't know why, because I can see that the cut length should have an integer value. Okay, let's stop it here. Yeah. Uh, I think we can figure it out. This will be homework. Yeah. 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 Be, yeah. 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 Let this be homework. We <laughs> want to access the T from the cat and output it in our console. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, so which exercise you are now? Like,
one moment. If you're watching this on YouTube, be the first person to put in the comments the solution with your code. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. If uh, if you're the per first person to put the solution, then uh, we'll give you like an honorary award in the W3 Development <laughs> Discord server. Uh, you get like three gold stars in the community chat. All right. So with that, let's end the um, chat today. Um, and um, we will pick up again tomorrow. Actually, yeah. let's... Uh, We'll see tomorrow. React. Yeah. This one can you work. post? Can you post this uh, code in the in the chat room so that I can, I can <coughs> and play around? Yeah, I will. Uh, let me see. Post this into my VS Code. Yeah, I think you like that. Yeah. Make sure I got it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay, and then let's do this. And okay, so this one, I'm gonna get rid of this one. This all we needed to do on this was just push. So run the test. And we succeeded. Now uh, tomorrow we'll pick up with manipulating an array with pop. So I'll just drop this here. Uh, and I'm going to say start here tomorrow. Okay. All right. Uh, start here. All right. So now we've synced that. And yeah, so thank you for joining us again. Uh, looking at the last challenge, try to access the cat within the array that's nested to the very lowest level of the arrays and populate the T. Can you put it on the chat before you close? Yeah, can you give us the code now? Yeah. Actually, you yeah, can access this yeah. in my repo. Um, it's up on my repo. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, go over to my my repo. And let's see. The last thing that I committed should be up in the study group under Elliot's branch. And we should see that, yeah, let's manipulate. Yeah, and then if we jump into this code, one sec. Let's just go back to our code. Oh, I'm in the master though. One sec. Don't want to be in the master. It'll be here, yeah, so when I'm here, yeah, just scroll all the way down, just gonna scroll a while, and yeah, so this is the array. We'll wanna access this one, and yeah, do you want me to pop this in Discord, or? Uh, okay. No, I think it's okay. You can write it also, though. yeah. Yeah. Or, or you can just... Yeah, I mean, it's just this line room. line of code. Yeah, yeah, yeah just put there. it in the chat room here, and then we can just play in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Challenge. JS challenge. Challenge, yeah. <laughs> Uh, access this array and output the T of the cat. T of the word cat. Yeah. 
using bracket notation and length. Okay, I'll just say using bracket notation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. boom. Right. Boom, boom, boom. And let's give us a little emoji. Uh, it, announce. Or, is it an announcement, right? What's that? Is it in the announcement channel or where is it? Yeah. Uh, community chat. Community a, chat. I just put it in community chat. Yeah. yeah. I'm about to post this. Uh, let's see. Mega. Megaphone. All right. Let's see. Who can do it? <laughs> All right. And I'll say to everyone. I'll say everybody in the study group. How about that? <laughs> yeah. All right, so I posted that. Everybody go check this out in the Discord chat. Uh, if you're the first to put it here in the community chat and or on the YouTube video, leave a comment uh, with the answer, accessing the T from the cat using yeah. bracket notation. <laughs> the T from the cat, yeah. yeah. All right, okay. with that, I'm yeah. gonna sign off on the recording. And uh, happy coding, everybody. <laughs>